Hey everybody, it's Tanya Atomic, and this is my mini review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is the Ghostbusters that just opened up a few days before today when I'm posting this, not, um, I don't know when you're watching this, but anyway, um, it just opened a few days ago. I saw it at the drive-in. Um, my husband and I enjoyed it. Here's my mini review. Um, so first of all, I try to keep these spoiler free, so I will try to do that. And, um, but I will try to tell you about the movie and tell you if I think it's worth watching, if I think you should see it, who I would recommend it to. Uh, so Ghostbusters Afterlife is a direct sequel to the first two Ghostbusters films, it takes place sev several years later, it's like 30 something years later. It, the story is mainly, mainly revolves around children, around kids. Um, there's a family who their relative has died. They And they go to his house, they've inherited his house and all his things, and they go there on a trip to, you know, take care of everything. Um, we later find out that, I don't want to give anything away, but we do find out it's related to the Ghostbusters, and um, the kids stumble upon some old equipment, and some other information, and it starts this ghost busting journey. And um, I have to say that is exactly what I wanted the 2016 Ghostbusters movie to be, and I was highly disappointed that it wasn't. Now, I am not a hater on the 2016 movie. I thought it was funny, cute, um, I liked the actors, and I thought, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it as a film, and I thought it was some of the best 3D effects that I have ever seen. I really enjoyed the 3D quite a bit. Um, my The thing that I personally didn't like with it, it was that it was not connected to the other movies. It acted like the other movies didn't exist and then it was in another time, another universe, another dimension where they were the Ghostbusters. And um, I didn't really like that personally for me. I didn't like that. Um, I thought it was a cute movie, funny, entertaining, but not connected to the other films. I mean, it was like a reboot, so it's not really in the same world. I mean, it's not in the same world as the other films. Um, but there's something about that that didn't sit right with me. Um, but this new film was connected to the other films. It was a direct sequel, and it was that, like, oh, where are these people that weren't, aren't connected to the other Ghostbusters, but we found some equipment and stuff and we're discovering it, which is what I wanted the other film to be. Now that said, I'm, I don't think that movies have to be what I want them to be. They don't have to be catering to my needs, my wants, my expectations in any way. Um, you know, I don't start reading a book and say, why aren't they doing this other thing? I let the book take me on a journey and see where that's going, try to understand what the author intended, that kind of thing. You know, I don't listen to music and go, hey, they should have played a G right there and they didn't and why did they do it that way? And um, I wish they would have done it that way and they, since they didn't, I don't like it. No. <laughs> you know, I listen to a piece of music and I try to understand where the creator is coming from and let it affect me and communicate to me. And um, same with movies. I, I, I understand that a lot of people have the attitude that movies are entertainment and they have expectations and they want it to be a certain way, but I think that is... Um, a recipe for disaster. I think that, um, you know, you really need to let a film be a film. If you don't like it, that's one thing. You know, if you don't want to watch it again, you don't care for it, that's fine. It's not your cup of tea. But um, I do think there is something important to try to let the movie reveal itself, be what it is, and see if you can find value in that, or try to understand where the creators are coming from. Let it inform you instead of the other way around, you know, because this is created by someone and it is, there are reasons why people make the choices that they do when making a film just the same way as, as in a making, creating a painting or or a piece of music or a book or anything like that. Um, 
So it really is something that as an audience member, um, you are taken on a journey and, and trying to understand what that journey is telling you instead of trying to dictate what you think it should be or what you think it should be telling you. I don't know. Um, but that said, you know, everybody has different tastes and it is understandable if someone doesn't care for something and someone else might find value in that same thing. Um, so what do I think of the value or the audience for Ghostbusters Afterlife? I think that it is intended for people that already enjoy Ghostbusters, while at the same time um, it can reach new audiences. I do think they were trying to do that and um, I think people that are fans of the original will really like it except for a few things. So I'm um, going to get to that to, and let you know my thoughts on it. So did I enjoy it? Yeah, my husband and I both enjoyed it. We thought it was a fun watch, entertaining. Um, there were things that I really, really liked about it. There were things that were so much fun and so cool. And it was really great to see um, the original cast. Uh, these are things that I liked about it. I liked the the acting I thought was really good and really natural and um, all the actors they chose I thought fit. Um, I really enjoyed seeing the original cast come back and um, the chemistry between them and I thought it made sense. I thought the that kind of story, the story between the people and the relationships all made sense. Um, there were some really good feel-good moments in it and um, I liked how it was different than the original movies but kind of a companion piece too you know like how a sequel should be um there were things that i didn't care for too and i will try to explain that without spoiling anything so um some people say that they didn't like all the callbacks to the original film now i disagree with that. I thought some of them were kind of necessary and I thought some of them were done well. Now as a person who made a sequel that calls back to the original film uh, way many times, please keep that in mind that that's who is speaking here. Um, <laughs> I, I, but I do agree with, with um, having that in there and I do think that a lot of the times it's done well. A lot of the times it is connected to the actual story and so I think it works. Now there are a few times where I didn't care for it and I don't know if that's a personal preference or what. I just didn't think it was done as well as the other times. Um, you know like you sometimes it makes a lot of sense and sometimes it's you feel the writing. And that's the difference, you know, and there's a fine line there. Um, one other thing that I really didn't like about it, the film, was the um, breaks in logic. Now, I accept this in some foreign films, like in some Indian films, Japanese films, a um, few other cultures do this where um, characters just do things and they seem to know things without any um, explanation. And that's accepted, like the audience accepts that as they're watching because it's just part of how the film, how filmmaking is done there. Now I don't think, in American films, we don't do that. Um, actors have to have a motivation, they have to have a reason, we have to understand why they're doing things and there's a logic to what they do. If somebody's using something, an item in a scene, we have to see that item in a previous scene kind of thing. And this film breaks that so many times. So many times where people are just all of a sudden doing things that they've never experienced before and just they know how. And that really got me. <laughs> I don't think it's something that's going to bug everybody because I think some people are going to be able to look past that to see the other things that this film does well but that bothered me so every time that would happen it would bring me out of the continuity of the film and and I would feel like I I would just be aware um 
And, you know, I want to be lost in the film. I want to be there and taken on the journey and not like aware of um, that I'm watching a film every moment. So um, that bugged me. There were a few things too that were parallels of the original. It's really hard for me <laughs> to not um, spoil this, but there were things that were parallels, like the same, similar things happening that I thought, you know, they just weren't done as well as the original. And since we are being reminded of the original, you can feel that. Um, that happens a few times, not like a ton of times, but a few times kind of more near the end-ish. And, um, you know, but, but I think that's about it. I really did, I really do think if you're a fan of the original and you want to see the original characters getting back together, having to work together, um, you are going to really enjoy that part of it. Um, because I do think that was done pretty well. Um, I think if you're like a super diehard fan and you want this to be the same as the original and you want it to not have those breaks in logic problems, I think it's going to bug you. So I could see how there might be a divide in this film because I can see how some of the things might bug people that are real strong fans of the original and um, maybe you're just not going to be able to get past. Um, I think, you know, I, I think I'm going to forgive those things and say that I like this film <laughs> and that I enjoyed this film and I enjoyed the th things that I liked so much that I'm just gonna let that go basically give it a pass um and I think I think it won't bug everybody I think some of the things that this film does well other people are gonna like so much that they're not gonna care and um and because of that I think this is worth seeing if you feel like you might get bugged by those things maybe wait till it's like streaming or something um but if you just want to see the original cast reunited you want to see um good characters I thought the characters were good um I enjoyed them and I enjoyed the you know relationships between the characters and I think if you want to see that if you want to see Paul Rudd <laughs> I think you know go see it. I think that you will enjoy it. What do you think in the comments below? Um, please be nice. So I know that fan bases can go out of control, but please be, be nice or be deleted. Um, in the comments below, let me know your thoughts. If you're on one camp or the other, if you disagree with what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not saying this after sitting there and 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 putting like a scholarly look into the film many hours watching it over and over I mean I this is my my first impression after seeing it at the drive-in and um I probably will see it again I, I have to say one of the things I enjoyed about it is seeing Ernie Hudson come back and being um kind of this I, I don't want to say larger role but just I mean he had a little bit he had a little bit going on here. Um, he is one of the things. I mean, I enjoyed, of course, the original Ghostbusters. I like all the guys. Um, when I when I was little, I had a huge crush on Dan Aykroyd when I was like in elementary school, <laughs> and, and um, you know, always liked Harold Ramis and Bill Murray. I, I I went to see this film in the theater twice, both times it came out, because um, it did return to the theater like how E.T. did and I went to see it twice. I really enjoyed the film um, when I was little and it's always been um, it's always been a film that I've enjoyed. I saw it again at the Egyptian as an adult and um, I always liked Ernie Hudson and I just I I've heard you know f lately that he was supposed to have a larger role and kind of ended up getting cut out more which is a little bit disappointing because I really like him as the um everyday guy he's sort of the not the everyday guy but I really like him as the outside observer he's sort of the person that comes in who wasn't involved at the beginning and can kind of be that touchstone that um that um you know indicator to the audience of 
how like other people react to this crazy world that's going on and although he is also becoming part of this crazy world he is um, enough of a new person that he can um, have that observation that distance that sort of every that sort of normal person's reaction to what's going on as even as he becomes part of it so I really liked that aspect of his character um, I liked him in that I've liked him in everything I've seen him in after so I really um, enjoyed seeing him in this film again and um, yeah of course I liked seeing all of them come back so that is where I what camp I'm in um, that is it for to that is really it for today's video again please consider subscribing let me know your thoughts in the comments below and thanks for watching